Hello and welcome to another episode of the Our Foundations podcast. I am Joshua and I am the host of this show. If you are relatively new to this show, then make sure that you at least go back to the beginning of this season, season five, and pick up with the theme of this season, which is looking at the Bible and biblical principles for finding a foundation for the theology of obedience. This is obedience to God and obedience to earthly authorities as well. This is the relationship between the Christian and the state, between the church and government. How are we to handle these things, political issues through a theological lens, That's what this season is for. And if you're interested in other stuff, if you go all the way back to season one, I started off talking about basically the systems that we live in, the education system, the monetary system, the political system. Where did those come from? How did they evolve? How were they corrupted? Done a few seasons looking at where we're headed and different macro themes such as patterns in history, historical patterns and cycles, those kinds of things, and just many other things. Lots of interviews in between. And we have now gotten to this point in season five, where it is looking specifically from a Christian perspective on how do we view our relationship to this world, in a sense. And so up until now, I've basically covered the, at least what in my opinion, are the biggest examples of these types of concepts and coverage through the Old Testament. Now that I've covered those examples, those specific stories and people and things like that, now we are going to get into more of a commentary uh, approach. And that is what the rest of Season 5 is at least planning on being. So as of now, that is where we're going. That first section was relatively short. Uh, This next bit of getting into specific passages and sections of Scripture, uh, mainly throughout the New Testament, but again, some old, uh, this is going to take a lot longer. So this is going to be the bulk of Season 5. Now, this episode that we're doing right now is mainly about this introduction to uh, this part of the season, and I will get into the very first part of that in this episode. The next episode will be exclusively doing the more commentary style, and so will just about every episode after that. So for the next long while, we're going to be digging into roughly the Sermon on the Mount. Now, we're going to start off prior to that with the temptations of Yeshua, and then we are going to specifically get into the Sermon on the Mount that takes place right after that, and then eventually get into some other things. But the Sermon on Mount is uh, quite a long section, uh, comparatively, and it will take quite a while. It is also probably, the, uh, in my opinion, one of the best sections of Scripture to read when you're trying to learn about how should we live, what does it mean to be a Christian, what did Yeshua teach, all of these types of things. And so it's extremely important hence covering that. And there's also a lot related to uh, this search for the how we truly live out the theology of obedience. How do we how does that play out in our lives and on a practical level and and why? What is the theology behind that? So now it's time to take a more focused look at the sections of scripture that most obviously relate to the topics of political theory, the state, and the theology of obedience as a whole. The passages that I will be covering have been commented on and taught on by many theologians, much more studied and experienced than myself, and so I make no attempt to supersede them. On the contrary, I rely heavily on their work and attempt to draw out from various views and sources, compile them all together into a framework that fits together and agrees at least on the general conclusion and the main points related to our study here. Oftentimes, the different commentators will disagree on interpretations or cultural applications or the original intent or translations or other issues of that sort. So while there is a lot of disagreement, and most do not apply their commentary to the political realm directly, I have found that for the purposes of studying the theology of obedience, the contradictory perspectives actually nearly universally agree on the final application of the passages for our purposes at least. 
So since I have worked through so many different sources and commentaries, much of the work of others has been assimilated assimilated into my own commentary. And so due to this, I can't often clearly tell where my original thoughts uh, begin and the thoughts of others end. They kind of just blend together because I've gone through so many over the past few years, especially So I I do have a list of the most influential sources that I've used and the books that I've gone over, the uh, people and commentators that I've looked at, and feel free to reach out, email me, whatever, if you want that list or have a specific question about something. The first few sections of this, and again, this will be a lot of it, will come from the greatest teacher we have a record of. That would be Yeshua. This is Jesus. The Sermon on the Mount is the highlight of his teaching. Then after this, I will get to Paul and other New Testament authors who directly discuss obedience to and relations with earthly governing authorities. This will uh, then, much later, be summed up with a few sections of a more practical nature, such as the early church recorded in Acts, and the philosophy of Solomon and Ecclesiastes, as well as some other sections of Scripture that I think are very applicable. So that is the plan from here on. That is our Uh, outline, so to say. And uh, again, it will be a while before we get into anything beyond the Sermon on the Mount. On a more personal level, and as a heads up for people that have been listening to this show for quite a long time, I have phased back a little bit to doing episodes every other week instead of every week. And I did take a few weeks off over the holidays, uh, which previously I had not done over the past few years. And one of the main reasons for that is that we are currently selling our house, moving to a new property. I have a basically a startup home church that I am running, a new food club startup venture that I am heading up and running, a local group that I am involved with, with over 100 members that I am basically running, and on and on and on, on top of four kids and a wife and all these wonderful things. So while all of these things are truly wonderful, they take up a lot of time. So with that being said, uh, I just wanted to give a little explanation for why this is now an every other week podcast instead of every week. And I I think that especially getting into the things that I'll be getting into, getting into this more commentary style approach, there is just a lot to it. It takes a lot of research. It takes a lot of time, uh, as do putting out podcasts and such. So with that said, uh, that is how I plan on doing things from here on out, where it'll be an every other week episode, and we'll try to dig in into a certain section of mostly the Sermon on the Mount. But for example, the temptations of Yeshua, I'll probably do an overview and do maybe the first one. I might do a few at a time. It might just be one at a time. We'll just see how long they take. Some of these sections can be the one sentence or one verse and then be you know, if I were to type it out, it would be two pages of notes on that one uh, section, that one verse or two. Whereas other times, there might be, say, a dozen verses that I would have the equivalent of a paragraph of commentary on. And so it's just going to vary a lot. Uh, I'm actually going to, in this first episode, just stick with that introduction. I think I would prefer to start off with the commentary right off the bat. I will leave this episode as the introductory episode to the rest of the season, let you know where we're going, what the style will be, what passages we'll cover. If you want to read ahead, uh, then the uh, passages in question are Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. And in general, I do use the complete Jewish Bible as a translation that I like. I've mentioned that before. I think that in general, it is a very good translation. It takes into consideration Jewish culture and the Hebrew translations and these types of things. It doesn't translate names. So for example, Jesus's name was not Jesus. It was Yeshua. And since we can easily pronounce Yeshua and that was his name, I typically try to stick with that. That seems like the respectful thing to do. And uh, the same is true for many other things. So uh, for the most part, I do use the complete Jewish 
uh, translation, the complete Jewish Bible, uh, there are certain times when you have a set of verses that have a bunch of cities and king's names and random names that are just, they do get difficult to pronounce and get a little much, and especially someone that has not dug into the Hebrew, um, they're just not going to know what in the world I'm talking about. If I read a section of verses that uh, talk about the Talmudim and the Ruach HaKadosh and all of these things, which um, if you have gone through uh, studies that do get into the Hebrew, then that will make a lot of sense. But if you haven't, and most people probably haven't, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So I do use other translations when uh, there's a lot of those Hebrew words that don't get translation translated, but I think that it is helpful to get them translated so that the verses actually make sense. So uh, that's how I will approach things. Again, I'll use lots of different commentaries that will bring out different aspects. And again, a lot of them don't agree. A lot of them are not specifically talking about a political context or anything related to what we're talking about. But the interesting part is that even when they disagree on the translation, even when they disagree on various meanings, even when they disagree on what's being alluded to, these types of things, in the end, for our purposes they pretty much all will always line up to the conclusion that uh, I am bringing out for the relationship with the theology of obedience. And so that's really cool. It's something I've really enjoyed as I've been uh, starting this study and going through all these things that even when it seems like, oh, I read this commentary and he's saying something totally different than this one I'm looking at now, when it's all said and done, you carry it to its conclusion and it still agrees with the main point. So uh, that does give more validation to the main point. And uh, it is uh, just one of those things that happen, kind of like looking at the historical cycles and patterns that we did a few seasons ago and how that no matter what you plug into there, it seemed like they all produced the same results. It was all the same pattern. It was all the same cycles. And uh, that just, again, gives more validation to it. And it's just kind of cool as you go through it. So I'm just going to stop here. This will be a very short episode. This is your introduction. Uh, Next episode, I'll get into the temptations of Yeshua, and we'll just go from there and see how far we get. So I will say thank you very much to those that support the show financially, mainly on Patreon. I really appreciate that. Again, that's how I pay for all the stuff. And if you want to support what I'm doing, uh, that is much appreciated. Again, this is a time when, uh, yeah, I don't have a lot of time or money or anything. So that is very helpful. So thank you very much for listening. Um, I'm out. Peace. This has been our Foundations Podcast. Goodbye. Thank you for listening. Goodbye. (laughs) Bye-bye.